Welcome inside another edition of Nixon and Six. I am Rebecca Harlow alongside Bill Pito. Bill, Monday night in Cleveland was rough. The Knicks had a shot to win that game. Actually, a couple late game chances to win it, and they couldn't quite get over the hill there. It was a tough loss, but in that 20 to five run that they made to come back into that game, there were so many good things in there. So I'm gonna take the positive and talk about all the good stuff that came out of the fight to come back into that game. What stood out to you? Well, RJ Barrett again, Rebecca, and it's great to be with you as always, put up another solid game. And solid for him is now not 12 or 15 points, it's over 20 points. Yes. He went over 20 points again. If you go over his last 14 games, he's averaging over 22 a game. He has become in many ways the go-to guy on this team. Uh, we've talked about it a lot. He has done a great job now of going to the basket on a consistent basis, not settling for the three. When he goes to the basket, he is so strong. He always gets to the basket and he's finishing really, really well. So that has to be, to me, the headline in that tough loss is that RJ Barrett again shows that he is a frontline player, a guy that can be counted on for consistent production. The only drawback, as a team, the Knicks go 11 of 21 from the line. That was a killer. RJ went only 5 of 10 from the line. He admitted he's got to do better and says he will do better. But overall, he's just been fantastic. You know, I think the other thing that's really important about RJ right now is the leadership that he's showing, Bill, because with the way this Knicks season's gone, they've had some super highs, they've had some super lows. And right now, where they need to be is staying even keeled because they are right in that playoff mix still. And I think what we're seeing with RJ is that the guys around him are really starting to look to him for his leadership. His voice is becoming stronger in the locker room. And talking to Coach Thibodeau, he said he loves the way that he leads as a young player because it's through example. So he's always the first guy into the gym, the last guy to leave. He's got great body language. He's very encouraging. He's doing everything the right way, according to Coach Thibbs. And I think that that is hugely important. But when you take a look at that run too, how about Quentin Grimes? He was great last night. Fantastic. Uh, you know, not only did he score, you know, he's become the epitome so far, Rebecca, of free and deep, meaning that he's hitting the three ball when he has the opportunity, went for 12 points. And his D, his defense on Darius Garland was really good. And it is clear, Rebecca, that he is a Coach Tom Thibodeau favorite. I mean, Coach Tibbs loves Quentin Grimes. And he loves Quentin Grimes because he gives such maximum effort on defense, even when he's not hitting a shot. But he's also very good from three. And, and this looks like a player that the Knicks can count on going forward. Absolutely. And I actually talked to him about his defensive mindset recently. And it was so interesting to me because he said, first of all, I pride myself in being able to defend positions one through four. So he goes to coach all the time and says, give me the best player. I, I want time with him. I want to take him on. And he told me that it's like a personal thing for him. He feels like anyone he defends he better make that next shot the toughest shot that players ever seen and so i love that he makes every single possession a one-on-one -on -one battle defensively and you can really see that aggression and you can really see that he takes on that challenge and to me i just think it's really fun to watch a player who takes so much pride in defense he's just been fantastic also of note here rebecca I mean, if Obi Toppin's going to hit the three like he did against the Cavs, that changes the whole dynamic. He hit three threes. That ties a career high for him. If he is going to be effective from deep, just imagine what the possibilities are going to be for him going to the basket. Because a lot of times the defense lays off of him, forcing him to take the shot that he doesn't always make. But 13 points for Obi last night, key component in their ability to come back. Boy, I tell you, that three ball for him, that is so huge, and hopefully it keeps going. Absolutely, and you know, what I loved about it too with him is he keeps shooting, and he's showing a lot of confidence. When you take a look at the month of January before last night's game, he was two for 14 from three. And the fact that he goes into Cleveland on the road in a game where they really need to get some big buckets to come back and win that game, you see him putting up 
big shots and they're starting to fall. And he's told me in the past for him that he's a rhythm shooter in the sense that if he sees that ball go through the net, it gives him the confidence to hit that next shot and hit that next shot. But he's another guy who's in the gym working on his game. And he's another guy who stays even keeled throughout this thing. You know, he's going to come into the game. You know, he's going to give maximum effort. And like you said, if he can continue to work on that three ball, he is going to be such a weapon in this league. Absolutely. And also worth pointing out that against the Cavs in crunch time, it was Emmanuel quickly running the point. He played the entire fourth quarter. Ripica didn't shoot well. He only won one of 10 from the floor. But I think worth pointing out that he passed off for six assists. His season high is seven assists. Six assists for Manuel quickly running the show in crunch time. And even though he didn't shoot very well, critical experience for him last night running the show when it mattered most. Yeah, absolutely. And he's talked a lot about how that's the next step and evolution of his game is that he has figured out so far how to take over games himself. But now it's just a matter of how does he do that and hit his own shots in addition to bringing the team along with him. And that's something that he's working really hard on. He says he watches guys like Chris Paul play. He breaks down their film to get a sense for how he can really start running this team. And quickly is again, such a hard worker and he's got such a high IQ basketball mind that it's just a matter of time before it all comes together. And Bill, let's hope it comes together on Wednesday in Miami. Totally. Fingers crossed. Rebecca, <laughs> as always, great to be with you. It's been great to have you in the studio this week. And we'll see you soon on the next edition of Nixon Six. Six.